In the heart of a shady neighborhood, a scantily clad young woman slowly approaches her drug-dealing partner. As the lovers share a passionate kiss, a customer rudely interrupts their encounter, requesting the homie price. In his hurry to acquire the product, the young man holds a racial slur, leading to a heated exchange that swiftly escalates to him brandishing a gun. Unfazed by the weapon pointed straight at them, the young woman momentarily distracts the thug, sacrificing her body so her partner can swiftly dispatch him with a fatal shot to the head, ending the confrontation instantly. As the thug bleeds out before them, they exchange another heated kiss before discreetly leaving the scene of the crime. Elsewhere, 15-year-old Freddy fills her bag with all sorts of trinkets and leaves a note for her mom, urging her not to worry about her absence. Before she departs, she bids a fond farewell to her younger brother, Hugo, who runs a small business in the corner of their garage. Upon her trusty board, she makes her way to a nearby skate park frequented by the town stoners. As she pokes and prods some of her closest confidants, Freddy watches intently as a fight almost unfolds. Meanwhile, within a prison in Los Angeles, a recently incarcerated Lobo faces the wrath of Pocoife. The gangster confronts the young man, claiming that his presence disrupts the peace within their little community. Suddenly, Ify's associate grabs Lobo from behind, leaving him at the mercy of the gangster. In one last desperate attempt at survival, the young offers Ife $50,000 for his protection, vowing to deliver the full sum by tomorrow. The gangster reluctantly accepts Lobo's offer, but in a bid to display his dominance, brutally rips off one of the young man's fingers with his bare teeth. Back at the skate park, Freddy attempts to hide a poster advertising an art contest from her judgmental friends. Unfortunately, one of the guys discovers the poster and questions her about it. Thankfully, before he can inquire further, the earlier spectacle finally erupts into a full-blown melee, forcing them to leave to avoid being caught in the crossfire. As the youngsters seek shelter from the chaos, Lobo contacts his girlfriend, Chu Chu, hoping that she can help him with his situation. Unfortunately, the young woman is too intoxicated to function, leading her to gravely misunderstand his instructions. She dropped the call and entered the living room, watching as Paolo, a renowned dealer, knocked his partner, Venice, out cold. After completing a deal with a young man named Donnie, Paolo orders him to leave with Chu Chu, threatening to cancel the loan if he doesn't obey his orders. Despite his reluctance, Donnie departs with the inebriated young woman, driving through the streets as a suspicious guard discreetly tails them. Meanwhile, Freddy accompanies Nick to a nearby apartment, taking the opportunity to take back her poster as he relieves himself. Moments later, he steps out, and the two exchange furtive and tantalizing glances. Unfortunately, before things can escalate any further, Otto interrupts, ordering Freddy to accompany him to get some burgers. As they head downstairs, they catch Donnie carrying a seemingly unconscious Choo Choo to his place. However, as Freddy goes to check on the woman, she suddenly feels her face strapped within her cold palms, her icy touch lingering even after they separate. Donnie takes Choo Choo to Nick's room and tosses her on the bed. With the young woman out of the way, he then proceeds to hand over the drugs he purchased from Paolo warning the young man about its potency. After testing out the product, Nick reveals that he only has half of the payment with him, a disclosure that sends a wave of anxiety through Donnie. However, Nick calmly reassures him, promising to deliver the remaining half tomorrow morning. While Freddy and Otto order their burgers, a couple of police stop by their location, unexpectedly catching Z as he finishes up his joint. They return to the cops searching through their van, eventually stumbling upon a syringe Freddy had taken earlier. Unfortunately, the incriminating discovery ultimately leads to her arrest. Otto and Z watching helplessly as the police take the young girl away. At the police station, Freddy uses her free phone call to contact her mom, who had been worried sick ever since her departure. The young girl, eager to hear her brother's voice, insists that her mom put him on the phone. Unfortunately, her request is denied, as her mom orders her to come home if she is truly determined to see all of them. As tears well up in her eyes, a heartbroken Freddy leaves a short message for her brother before hanging up the phone. Sadly, just as she finishes her goodbyes, Hugo picks up on the other line, only to be met with a deafening and disappointing silence. Back at the apartment, C and Otto cover up their friend's disappearance, insisting that she will meet them at the beach the next day. Meanwhile, Freddy is taken by Officer Nisi to have her mugshots taken. During the process, the officers scold the young girl for treating the procedure as a photo shoot, giggling and fidgeting about as they try to take her picture. After the mugshots are taken, Freddy is escorted to a holding cell. As Officer Nisi removes the cuffs, she tries to lighten the mood with a joke about being separated from the other prisoners. However, the officer's tone becomes serious as she emphasizes that Freddy wouldn't be safe among the others, especially given the current circumstances. To Freddy's dismay, Officer Nisi offers no further explanation, leaving her noticeably unsettled. As Freddy does her time, her friends head out with the product, tailed closely by the sinister men who had followed Donnie. After a few hours, Freddy is suddenly released from prison on her own reconnaissance with Officer Nisi reminding her to return for her court date. Perplexed, Freddy nods, her mind still swelling with questions and uncertainty. Back at Paolo's, as Donnie hands over the payment for the drugs, he begs for Choo Choo to be taken off his back. Unfortunately, Paolo declines his request, ordering Venice to give the girl a little treat to help spruce her up. After arguing over their disagreement, 
Choo Choo suddenly rises and playfully drags Donny with her to the bedroom, abruptly ending their tussle. Meanwhile, Freddy is suddenly approached by a couple of thugs who offer her some of their products. To their surprise, she ends up offering them a deal, all of their money, in exchange for sampling their freebie. Convinced by her confidence, the thugs agree, filling a pipe with a dose of their product. As Freddy smokes away, the younglings are suddenly confronted by another thug who accuses them of peddling their garbage in his territory. Looking to avoid any conflict, Freddy decides to leave before things can escalate any further. Unfortunately, just as she is about to go, two gangsters arrive and point their guns directly at the troublemaker, expressing their eagerness to end one of his kind. Freddy and the young thugs take cover as their older counterparts continue to threaten the thug. Behind a dumpster, the young thugs point to Lobo's earlier murder of the African-American gangster as the catalyst for the ongoing conflict between the blacks and the Hispanics. Suddenly, a gunshot rings through the air, interrupting the tense atmosphere with a deafening echo. Unfazed by the gunshot, Freddy orders the young thug to keep his end of the bargain, collecting what little money he has as she leaves. With her change, Freddy heads to a nearby gas station to purchase some cigarettes. Unfortunately, she comes up 10 cents short, leading to an argument between her and the cashier. Thankfully, a good Samaritan conversed about the missing difference, granting the young girl the tobacco she so desperately craves. On the way out, she encounters two prostitutes who intrigue her with their vibrant energy. After a quick exchange of stories, the women urge Freddy to stay safe, warning that only murderers and hookers wander around at this ungodly hour. However, they believe her to be safe as long as she stays away from the gangs. Before heading their separate ways, the women hand Freddy a lighter, wishing her well as they head out in search of their next client. Elsewhere, Paolo's passionate encounter is suddenly interrupted by a hail of gunfire. He quickly grabs his shotgun and returns the pleasantries, forcing his assailants to flee with their tails tucked between their legs. An enraged Paolo blames the attack on Choo Choo's past alliance with Lobo, ordering a terrified Donnie to once more leave with a girl. Meanwhile, after several failed attempts to hitchhike a ride to San Diego, Freddy suddenly finds herself before Anton and his stubby friend, Beef. They attempt to coerce the girl into a night of passion, their tempers quickly flaring as she continuously rejects their offer. Thankfully, the Good Samaritan from earlier suddenly arrives to save her from the thugs. Yet, despite having just saved her life, Freddy remains quite unnerved by his presence, and rightfully so. For the moment she falls asleep, the creep begins to pleasure himself, finishing just as he drops her off at a nearby diner. Inside the establishment, Freddy passes time by doodling on a napkin. A waitress notices her drawing and compliments her technique, inviting Herman, one of their frequent patrons, to admire it as well. However, the old-timer is no mere observer, revealing himself to be an accomplished writer upon the waitress's insistence. Intrigued, Freddy politely introduces herself as a runaway, which the old man presumes is due to her impetuous nature. Annoyed by his presumption, the young girl prepares to leave, only to be stopped by Herman who apologizes and requests that she keep him company as he enjoys one of his last meals. As they converse, Herman reveals that the plight of all the elderly is a reflection hampered by immeasurable regret. Fascinated by the sadness of his words, Freddy asks him about his greatest regret. However, to her surprise, instead of a heartfelt revelation, he responds with a thinly veiled insult. Reaching for the poster, Herman laments that artists like them only have ambition to lean on, declaring that those who don't live up to their potential end up living lives filled with nothing but disappointment and regrets. With that, the old-timer asks Freddy why she is running when there is nothing to run from, a question that evidently strikes a nerve, bringing her to the verge of tears. As the waterworks begin, the young girl bids Herman adieu, leaving him her table napkin doodle, her emotions spent. An exhausted Freddy rests her weary bones on a bed of cardboard. The next day, C, returning from a drug-induced stroll through the town, frantically claims that they are being followed directing Nick to the strangers who had been tailing them since they left the apartment. Suddenly, Otto collapses behind them, prompting the two to rush to their friend's side. As they struggle to lift his heavy frame, C accidentally reveals the truth about Freddy's arrest, leaving Nick absolutely flawed. Following her night on the ground, Freddy returns to the diner and cleans herself up. As she exits the lavatory, she accidentally bumps into a stranger who recognizes her as a friend of Dreddy Jeff, one of his closest confidants. To her delight, the young man offers her not only a warm meal, but a ride to San Diego. And if that isn't enough, the kind stranger even offers to get her cleaned up, insisting that his girlfriend work her magic on the young runaway. Despite her initial reluctance, Freddy finally agrees, eagerly accepting the man's gracious proposition. Elsewhere, Donnie prepares to leave to complete the deal with Nick and his pals. Unfortunately, as he loads his stuff, a still inebriated Choo Choo calls out to him, descending the stairs clad only in her lingerie. As he orders her to return to the apartment, a thug who had caught wind of the conversation approaches them and vehemently demands the young woman's name. Unfortunately, things quickly escalate, culminating with the gangster threatening Choo Choo at gunpoint. Yet, despite the threat to her life, Choo Choo remains as calm as a cucumber. She leans in and whispers into his ear, revealing that contrary to his belief, Lobo is still alive. However, she emphasizes that if they truly want him gone, all they have to do is disrupt the deal providing them the exact coordinates of the transaction. Right on cue, 
A police mobile scours the area, forcing the thug to retreat. Meanwhile, back at the prison, Ife reminds Lobo of his date with Destiny. Following their hearty breakfast, the stranger takes a pit stop at a nearby convenience store to stock up on some sugary treats. As he goes about his business, Freddy absentmindedly rummages through the glove box and unexpectedly stumbles upon a massive brick of cocaine. Thankfully, she manages to cover up her tracks just as he returns from the store. As they enjoy their treats, Freddy notices a massive pile of money carelessly lying on his backseat. However, to his dismay, the stranger reveals that the money is not his and that he was simply tasked with shipping the cash. Moments later, the stranger takes an unconscious Freddy to a nearby motel and proceeds to slowly strip off her clothes. Thankfully, he stops just as he is about to unbutton her delicates, leaving the girl lying in bed, clad in nothing but her underwear. Meanwhile, Nick and the gang hatch a cunning scheme to outwit their pursuers. As Nick distracts the thugs by hitting on one of the beachgoers, C and Otto discreetly make their way out of the hotel and into their van. When the men finally catch wind of the situation, Nick boards the van, leaving them in the dust. At the motel, Freddy is awakened by a strange old man who orders her to do her job. She feigns compliance to momentarily gain the upper hand and escape from her would-be abuser. Unfortunately, instead of receiving assistance from the motel owner, she is met with scorn as he mistakenly perceives her as a mere prostitute. Incensed over being sold for a measly $200, Freddy threatens the mean with legal action, revealing that she is underage. The terrified men quickly comply, handing the young girl her clothes and ordering her to leave. However, not one to be intimated, Freddy manages to mooch a few bucks off the enraged hotel owner. At the beach, Nick and his gang arrive to complete the deal. Unfortunately, to Donnie's dismay, Nick reveals that he doesn't have money, as his rich benefactor is yet to fulfill his promise. To make matters worse, he discloses that they are being trailed by a couple of menacing-looking gangsters. While they converse, Freddy finally reunites with her friends, greeting Z and Otto with a warm hug. As he heads out to inform Nick of her arrival, Otto graciously thanks the young girl for taking the fall, for without her, he would surely have been locked away for several years. Nick rushes over to meet Freddy, only to find both her and Otto missing. He returns to the van and discovers Donnie and Choo Choo are missing. Fortunately, he finally runs into Freddy, and the two depart, leaving Z and Otto to wait for their clients. Just as they head out, things suddenly take a turn for the worse. Mere moments after they leave, Z spots the Latino gangsters driving away with Donnie at gunpoint. Following them closely are the members of Anton's crew, eager to claim the hefty sum of money they were promised. During their drive, Freddy recounts the events of the previous night, relieved at the chance to finally rest her weary bones. After a quick drive, they meet with Rod, one of Nick's associates and a known distributor in the area. Upon completing the deal, Rod finds his son being cradled by the gun-wielding Latino gangsters. Suddenly, Anton arrives, adding another dimension of chaos to the already turbulent scenario. After a few intense moments, Choo Choo leaps out of the car and attacks Anton, leaving Beef with no choice but to shoot her dead. As the thug reels from the attack, Freddy, exasperated by the entire spectacle, finally vents her frustration, vehemently demanding that they cease fighting over such a trivial sum, as she has a story that would undoubtedly capture their attention. Moments later, Freddy shows up uninvited at Mickey's doorstep. After exposing the man's heinous crimes to his girlfriend, she proceeds to call in Anton and the Latinos, who have come together to rob the exploiter. After some painful coercing, Mickey discloses the location of his stash. Meanwhile, back at prison, Lobo anxiously paces back and forth as he awaits word of the payment. Unfortunately, before his men can make the call, the gangsters turn upon one another, enticed by the hefty sum of cash lying before them. Thankfully, before more blood can be spilled, Freddy once again intervenes calming the men by graciously thanking them for including her in their activities. Sadly, their continued aggression results in Lobo missing the deadline, forcing Essay to leave him at the mercy of the African-American inmates. Elsewhere, Donnie finally repays Paolo, revealing that he had lost Chuchu some way in the desert. To his horror, Paolo offers him another present. However, instead of a girl, the man gifts him a doll, symbolizing his freedom. As he departs, Donnie tosses the doll on the road severing his final connection with his past life. Back at Rod's place, Nick and the gang help the man pack the product they had stolen from Mickey's mansion. As they go about their business, Freddy finishes a drawing portraying the individuals she encountered throughout her journey, titling it The Victims, a name she envisions for her gang. With Rod's permission, Freddy phones home and is overjoyed to finally hear Hugo's soothing voice. She excitedly recounts the events of the last night, revealing that she had actually managed to ride a low rider. Following her tale, Hugo, sensing that his sister has finally found happiness, warmly encourages her to continue their journey. After the phone call, Freddy gazes longingly at her drawing, marveling at how each distinct face changed her life in the course of a night. With a spirit ablaze with courage, she sends off her drawing along with the poster, embarking on the journey to transform her ambitions into reality. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.